Well, October is finally over, so here are the last 10 days of 31 Days of Tubi. I think I've honestly seen 50 movies this month. Straight off the bat, the title card for this called the film Fall Break, which I can see why they changed the name because I would not have watched it if that was the name. And yet, it's another slasher where middle-aged actors playing teens head into the woods or to a condo on the beach in this case and get horribly murdered. Some excellent Savini-esque practical effects and gory kills kept me reasonably interested, but when someone isn't being killed, I kid you not, the B-plot is then playing Monopoly. So yeah, I'm giving this 2.5 stars out of 5 for that reason. Week 4 is off to a reasonable start at least. I was expecting a teen slasher in the vein of yesterday's movie, but instead I got one of the greatest cheese fest absurdist comedies I have ever seen. Some awful acting, mixed with great special effects and gore, and a very self-aware tongue-in-cheek comedy style, with Frank and Hooker's Patty Mullen herself starring combined to create what has to be a must-watch for any B-movie schlock horror fan, which is why I'm giving this 5 stars out of 5. They even pad the runtime with 20 minutes of black and white public domain movies in an 88 minute runtime, which is impressive. I didn't have much time as I got stuff to do and this was 67 minutes long so on it went and wow, of that 67 minutes 5% is gore, 60% is pointless overacted exposition and 50% was padding. Yeah, I'm well aware that's 115%, there's a lot of overlap. The acting, dialogue, plot and effects were all laughably bad. I was glued to the screen constantly thinking, my god, this keeps on getting worse and worse, which is why I'm giving this 3 stars out of 5. Probably a 5 star film if you're into movies so bad they make you question everything you've ever known about films. I'm guessing this was a very early Grindhouse inspiration. Turns out the title isn't wrong because this film opens with a necrophilic rape and a woman's private parts being ripped off before the credits. STD causes people to turn into very sexually aggressive and rapey zombies. I made it up to about the sixth rape and turned this off because by that time I'd, get a, I'd seen a man get shat on, six rapes, a man eat a tampon, an absolutely mammoth penis, six rapes, did I mention there are a lot of rapes in this, which is why I'm giving it two out of five stars. Extra is one of the greatest B movies ever made in my opinion, and in the third movie in the trilogy is the one that Harry Bromley Davenport, the director, is the most proud of, because this is the only one that is all his work he claims. After finally getting round to watching part 3, I have to say that I'm not sure I'd have admitted to this in public. Gone is the inventive weirdness of the first that keeps you glued to the screen constantly, no matter how many times you've seen it, to be replaced by lo-fi, low-grade sci-fi channel made for TV schlock was a bit of a slog to get through, which is why I'm giving this 2 stars out of 5. I thought I'd never see the day I pined for an obviously drunk Jan Michael Vincent, but here we are. This has pretty much been on my list since day one, but I thought I might have seen it before and a little bit like the first hour or so of this film, I really have to question my own sanity just like Billy is, made to question his because god god how could I have forgotten the last act of this film and having 100% seen it multiple times before. It is the most gross out body horrors of body horrors and it's exactly what I enjoy in horror. A slow build and a massive payoff which is why I'm giving this 4 stars out of 5. Man that ass last act is just glorious. A modern homage to 80s slasher movies and like most of these kind of films it gets the kills down pat. Using some great special effects for the size of a budget but the bits in between are a bit of a drag. Which is why I'm giving this 2.5 uh, stars out of 5. I don't know what it is about these kind of movies, but they just look too clean.
Purely chosen because it was relatively short, had a cool name and poster and was by Full Moon. A low budget alien ripoff that had linear Quigley and enough decent practical effects and gore and including an incredibly keep creepy baby faced monster at the end which kept me entertained enough throughout which is why I'm giving it 3 out of 5 stars. Only 2 days left thank god and I've been saving at least one of them so I hope it's good. A weird little horror movie that actually has a PG rating so not particularly scary and really reminded me of the House of Wax or whatever, whatever it was called that got a Paris Hilton remake at some point where a madman starts casing people in plaster in this case and turns them into museum mannequins. Oh and he also has telekinetic powers for some reason that is never explained. I'm giving this 3 out of 5. Finally the last film and I'd been saving this for last as it's Argento, Jennifer Connelly and Donald Pleasance. So what could go wrong? As it turns out quite a bit, seemingly nobody told Jennifer she was acting in a film. Donald Pleasance tries his best I guess and even the style for which Argento is known for falls flat with it being largely a washed out blue colour for most of the runtime. Which is why I'm giving this 3 out of 5 stars, not a bad film just not as great as I thought it would be. If you enjoyed this then please like, comment and subscribe because more content is coming soon.